I've been busy with working very closely with Mark Suspensers. Um, I'm part of their autograph range. I've worked closely with them. I do like I shoot for them. I've been doing a bit of designing with them. I just generally like going to events wearing their stuff. I walked the Dolce show um, with my fiance Pixie. Um, it was like an influencer show. It was a lot of fun. There was some like very famous faces walking in the show. A lot of fun backstage. So yeah, yeah, traveling the world as well. I've been to New York. I've been to Sweden. I've been finally here in Jakarta again. So yeah, it's good to be back. Uh, basically, I've been a fan for years. Um, it's the heart of British society. My mum's shopped there for years. My dad's always shopped there. My nan's always shopped there. You know, I started wearing their clothes. One of the persons was like, Oliver would love to work with you. So I started shooting their lookbook. And then it kind of like escalated from there, you know? Like, they liked my style. Um, people kept asking me about my style. So they were like, why don't we do something? So yeah, it kind of went from there, really. Um, you know, the quality. They're always on trend, and it's very wearable stuff, so it's just perfect for my, kind of perfect for my style, as well as, yeah. Not at the moment. <laughs> I've just been kind of crazy busy shooting and traveling. Um, I've been collecting materials for the past like five, six years. I've got a lot of sketches, so it's just finding the right, you know, right people to help it and make it happen, really, yeah. Um, well, obviously attending all the shows, um, seeing kind of what people wear to events, like the Met Gala was very inspiring. Um, just looking at the streets, seeing what the kids are wearing on the streets in London, there's always such like people pushing the boundaries with clothes, especially men, you know. In the last 10 years, I feel they've come such a long way um, with clothes. Their, their confidence to wear what they want. You know, 10, 15 years ago, men wouldn't really they'd stick to plain shirts and stuff. You know, I'm, I'm happy to wear silk shirts and more brighter and blairy things. So I take inspiration from just people I see every day on the streets and stuff. It's an old saying my dad used to say around the house. Um, it's kind of like an old English saying. Um, and I used to get asked that question in interviews, Who's, who wears the trousers in your relationship? And I definitely don't wear the trousers in the relationship. Pixie wears the trousers. So I just thought it was a nice twist on words and it kind of fat, fitted in with like fashion blogs and things like that. So yeah, that's very comfortable. Really. It's definitely more about style. Menswear is my love. Um, it's just trying to teach people and men how to like embrace fashion and decipher the runway look. You know, a lot of my friends were saying, how can I wear that? It's, 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 I've seen it on the runway, but it just doesn't like look like something I'd wear. So it kind of teaches men how to filter out, you know, just a jacket and then you can put it with like plainer clothes. So I kind of teach people how to do it like that. And, and just my general day to day things I wear, I like to put on there. Just kind of try and inspire people really. Because I get a lot of questions on Twitter, so I kind of like can put that onto my blog. Styling rules are, I always say this, read the invite dress for the occasion, so men don't really read the invites, they just kind of put on whatever they want, you know, bloody blah, blah, turn it. So I say always read the invite. Women always ask other women what they're wearing, so they find out their girlfriend and say, what are you wearing tonight? So I think men need to do that more. Um, you know, and then you can kind of like, you don't feel out of place when you go to a party, you kind of feel in place. Um, great, get a great tight tailor. Great tailor would just make wonders for you, you know. Nips and tucks on suits. Suits should always fit perfect. Um, what else? Um, I think know your colour palette because everyone's got different skin tones. Like, I like to wear beiges, blues, red maybe, but no, I don't really go out of them colours. So yeah. I just think have a good group of friends around you, good um, agents and obviously management that you trust. I've been with them for 13 years now, Select Model Management, and I trust them, you know, um, I've been with them since the beginning. Um, and just, I don't know, just, just don't change really. I haven't really changed. I see, see the same place, I see, go to the same places, I see the same friends. So, yeah, I, I just kind of like trying to keep my feet on the ground and enjoy life really. And, you know, I love traveling and meeting people. So that's kind of, yeah, part of it. And it's great to be able to do.
Don't I really? I think um, there's an approachability about me. You know, I want I want people to. You know, anyone can ask me a question. Men go, come up to me all the time and say, "Oh, what are you wearing this week?" What are you, you know. So I think approachability, fashion. There's always been like a, there's always been like a distance between, you know what I mean, every day to day and like high fashion. And I want to like kind of bring it together. And you know, every, any man can wear high fashion, you know. And um, I just want to like, yeah, I think that's kind of what brands see in me more so. Yeah bring it to every day. You know, I like to be able to mix high street with high fashion. Um, that's a good question. Okay, so, you know, you can be the best looking man in the world. You can be the perfect height, the perfect eyes and hair. But, you know, if you don't have that life on the camera and that, and you don't have that like brands want to take people away they want you to not only be an image in the photo you need to be like a lifestyle you know you need to be able to talk to the brand talk about the brand love the brand that you work for and just kind of you know you have to men want to see something on you and buy it basically you know and some people <laughs> I don't know if they just kind of see it and buy it yeah they want me to yeah it's <laughs> a good question um I'd love to go into the magazine industry um, do a bit more writing, do some styling, do a bit more creative content, you know, bring the blog into like maybe do some, you know, produce some shoots, something like that. You know, I've been on shoots now for 13 years and I just know them inside out, back to front, you know. A lot of the time I'm telling the photographer and the stylist what to do. <laughs> they hate that, but um, yeah, so do something like that. And obviously designing, you know, my passion is clothes and menswear and, you know, just teaching men. If, well, not teaching them, but like, you know, giving advice and sharing my wisdom that I've learned and been lucky enough to work with the most creative people in the world for years, that yeah, I'd like to share that wisdom with people. Um, okay, the first thing first, you need to go into the agency. You don't pay for any pictures. You go straight into the agency and say, can I be a model? They will tell you there, yes and then. Yes or no, straight away. If they can make money out of you, they will take you on. It's that simple, you know. They're not going to take you on and not be able to make money out of you. If they think they can make money out of you, they will. Um, and then the next step is to keep yourself looking good, keep yourself looking fit, um, well dressed, not too groomed, because men can go too groomed, you know, you look so like you've got makeup and all this crap on. So, yeah, you need to be kind of like raw looking and just kind of happy go lucky, you know. You need to be able to get changed anywhere. Fashion and male modelling is not glamorous. It looks glamorous, but it's not. A lot of the time we're getting changed in car parks, out the back of cars. Um, yeah, so, you know, you just got to get on with it, really. I have recently did a cycle ride from London to Paris. So I'm really into my cycling at the moment. I really enjoy road cycling. Um, there's a great thrill to it. Good team camaraderie, you know, there's a lot of them. Um, what else have I been doing? I like to go to the pub with my mates and then just enjoy the football, really. And yeah, just traveling, really, and a lot of shopping. Uh, I think you've got to have a good pair of shoes, man. I like to spend a bit of money on shoes. Not cheap shoes, I don't like cheap shoes. What do you, what do you look for in a good pair of shoes? Um, just something that will last the test of time. A good pair of shoes should be able to be polished up and look as good as new. Um, and just something that's quite classic. Don't push the boundaries of men's shoes, I think. You know, they should be quite classic and just beautiful levers and beautiful shapes, really. Um, yeah, it is crazy. I remember the first time I ever saw a billboard of myself. I was 16 and I was walking through New York and I was on the like the big billboard in Houston Square and I was just like, holy shit, man, I can't believe I'm on there. And um, no one recognised me, it was really weird. No one recognised me and the only person that recognised me was a tramp and he was like, on the street and he was like, hey man, is that you? And I was just like, yes, finally. So yeah, that was really cool. But yeah, it is mad to see yourself, um, especially when you're going through the airport and you know, you see yourself kind of like, so and so, so and so. But it's amazing, you know, and I wouldn't change my job for the world and I'm very lucky to be able to do it. What's my kind of say? It's quite overwhelming, you know, like I get to travel around and shoot mag amazing magazines, um, meet loads of people. Um, yeah, it's a crazy time right now for me, but um, I'm just embracing it and enjoying it and just taking every step as it comes, you know. I think you need to take life with a pinch of salt and enjoy yourself. 
I've walked off set because someone was trying to make me wear a lime green thong. <laughs> so I was doing this shoot, yeah, I was in Paris when I was like 18 and we were doing an underwear shoot and I was wearing like Hugo Boss underwear, Kelvin Klein underwear, blah, 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 blah. And then the last shot of the day, the, the stylist was like, oh, Lee, I got your last shot of the day. And it was this little like lime green thong. It was really like G-screen thing. And I was like, hold on a second. This can't be for the shoot. So I was like, are you just trying to get me in this for, for the fun of it? And then they were like, no, 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 no. So I just really had to leave and I left you. Yeah, so there's a little story about me, no one knows. I'm quite, cool. I can, I'm quite like cool-headed, you know. I think you need to be quite cool-headed in this game. Um, you never know when the phone's going to ring and you have to go to Africa or Australia or something like that. But um, yeah, no, I'm kind of cool, man. A man has to be a man, and I love when I meet men and they're gentlemen. You know, they shake your hand. I see them open the door for women. I see them, you know. They don't, they're not, you know, I mean, they don't, they've got good manners, you know. Manners are the most important thing I think a man can have. They're not too swearing in front of women, then, you know, they're, they're just upstanding, great gentlemen, and that's my favourite quality. Yeah, you know, um, in the beginning I thought it was mad. Um, I never wore designer clothes, I never got the ch opportunity, I mean, I'm from like a working class background, my dad's a fireman, my mum, you know, looked after us. Um, and then all of a sudden, you know, I'm getting like dual Dior jumpers thrown at me saying, wear this and wear that. And I'm just thinking, what is this kind of stuff I'm wearing, you know? But, um, you know, it's amazing. I'm very lucky to be able to do it. But, um, yeah, it, I do think sometimes, I look back and think, bloody hell, this is crazy. You know, I'm in Jakarta, I'm on like the 28th floor looking out this window, you know, and I was born in like a little house in Hitchin. And how, how, how am I here now instead of, but yeah, you know, it's quite crazy and it's amazing. I just I think it's so important to, you know? Like, I think it's my friends around me. You know, they all take the mick out of me. I go down the pub and they're like, what, what are you wearing that stupid shirt for? What you, why have you dyed your hair, you know? And um, I don't mind that, you know? Obviously, like, I can take it. So I think it's like I can be with them type of people that can take the mick out of me. And it just keeps me level-headed and grounded, you know? And um, Pixie's very level-headed and grounded. And she takes the, we can take the mick out of each other. And I think, I think being light-hearted, you know, being able to take banter and um, have the mickey taken out of you, it's fine, you know. And I, I feel like a lot of people don't like that, you know. The bigger, the bigger the star, you never really, really hear them, you know, banter about them. But yeah, I think it's important to have, be light-hearted and being able to take, take a bit of piss taking down there. <laughs> I think, not really, I mean, you, you have to, the scars and the whatever you, gets thrown your way is your life, isn't it? And it makes you the man you are, so, no, I wouldn't change anything, no. You know, I was getting a lot of um, people asking me, we've been together for six, six nearly seven years, um, we're, we're still, you know, very happy. We travelled the world together, so I was like, this is time, I need to do it. So, I've never brought a ring before, I've never proposed to anyone before, so it's kind of like a new period in my life. So, uh, me and my best friend went down to Hatton Gardens. We did some diamond research. We didn't know anything about diamonds or rings. So, um, yeah, I found the ring I thought she might like, brought it. Then I found her, then I asked her dad to meet me at a coffee shop. So, I met her dad at a coffee shop. Um, Ask her, I asked him if I could marry his daughter, and he said yes. So um, I started planning, um, you know, how to propose. I wanted to do it in another country. I was thinking of New York, or maybe Spain, or Portugal, or somewhere we go on holiday. And then I spoke to her mum, and she was just like, I so want to be there when I do it, when, when you know, we get engaged. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna do it in somewhere in London. So that's when it came to me, I wanted to do it on the steps of St Paul's, because I know she loves the church, and um, you know, we're both Londoners and it was just like a special day. So I had a family around the corner and I got some champagne and food and then I told her we were going for brunch and I walked up the steps and got down on one knee and yeah, did the question <laughs> and asked her to marry me and she started crying and there was makeup everywhere. It looked like she'd just been like, 
I don't know, through like a fight or something. But yeah, so there's makeup everywhere and then yeah, I did it and she said yes. So it was cool. Uh, we haven't started planning just yet. I mean, we've been pretty busy, but we're aiming for June, July. I haven't told anyone that yet. Yeah, may aiming for June and July. Maybe like a country house. I like, I like water, so I'd like, you know, like a place with some water and a lake and quite tranquil and peaceful. Yeah. I'd love kids, yeah, 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 I'd love kids. I'd love two kids, three kids maybe, you never know, as long as they're healthy. Um, yeah, I'm ready, 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 ready. For my suit, listen, I know, I've been thinking about my wedding suit. Okay, and I've got, I haven't seen anyone do this yet, but you know a tuxedo, and you have the silk lapels and stuff, but I wanna do a tuxedo, but actually in a, a working suit, so like a, a matte suit, so like it's a matte tuxedo. So you've got the best of a tuxedo and a British, you know, tailor in Savile Row suit. And it's the only way I could think of getting both because I couldn't choose between them. So I'm going to do it together. So I'm going to mix them together and I need to get a brand to make me one. So it's going to be a tuxedo shape with the big lapels and the, like the shawl lapels and three piece, but then in a suit material. So that's my idea. So no one steal it. <laughs> no, you never know. Oh, you love Bali. We can come to Bali for the honeymoon for sure. Hello, I'm Oliver Cheshire, and you're watching Daman TV.